I have the honor of checking out the new Devo Knives Stout prototype. Devo Knives is an effort between uh, Kevin of Lefty EDC and Colin of CM Knife, uh, Knife Design. And this is the Stout. All right, I will reserve personal judgment for a moment. Okay, no, I won't. I think it's a really cool looking, beautiful uh, knife. And then outside of that, I have learned it is an extremely useful knife. Now, I put it in that order because you know how much, uh, how much credence I put on how a knife looks. I know, I know it's a little shallow, but this is both a looker and a user. This thing is uh, pretty awesome. And look at that edge. Holy moly. Now, I'm not sure if that's the factory edge. This is a, a prototype. It's been through several other hands before mine, uh, but I cannot believe how sharp and uh, how nice the edge geometry is on this thing. But before we get to that, I'm actually going to do a little bit of uh, usage, which I, I rarely show, but I mean, why not? This is a prototype, and I know there are going to be a couple of tweaks uh, in this design before it goes... Uh, I, I mean, a couple of tweaks have gone into it, uh, that will be featured in the in the production run of this. Uh, the pre-order is opened, and I'm not sure uh, by the time you see this if it's closed. Uh, but I am going to have Kevin of Lefty EDC on the show in two weeks from when this is posted, and I will learn everything about this knife. But so far, this is basically a first impressions for me, and um, it's nice to talk to people who have designed knives. And, and then check out their knives. It's also cool to check out the knife and then talk to them um, afterward and um, relay your my own impressions and then find out what went into designing and making the knife. Uh, I'm not sure who did the prototyping for this. I, oh, I know, this is QSP, I believe. All right, so let's start to look at this knife, okay? Enough, enough of my rambling and such. So up front, you have this really nice looking sheep's foot blade with a swedge that goes all the way to the tip. So that gives you some puncturability right up at the tip, because when you look at this and you know what a sheep's foot knife is, it's just a very shallow bellied knife. Sometimes it's perfectly straight, but that is a great utility edge. Um, and uh, that blade shape. And I know that this was not a consideration. I, I'm pretty sure this was not a consideration in the design, but not for nothing, that straight sort of edge is also great for slashing in a self-defense situation. Okay, that's the only thing I'm going to talk about tactical, because this is not a tactical knife. Of course, any knife could be pressed to the job, uh, and if you needed to with this, it would work very well. But that's not its intended purpose. This is a an EDC knife. This is something you're going to put in your pocket every day and use and carry and it's got a, a great bit of pride of ownership because we all know lefty edc it's great to see something when someone we know and love designs something cool and puts it out there so you have that but you also have an extremely useful and classy tool in your pocket all right so this blade shape we have the sheep's foot but it's got this nice swale here for your thumb when you're up here in the forward position for cutting. This is nicely crowned, as you can see, and it's a very, you know, just comfortable surface to rest your, your thumb. Everything on this knife is comfortable. There's one little area right here that's, that's less than comfortable, but it's not terrible, and I believe that's a spot they've already uh, addressed and are knocking down for the production run. Uh, I believe this is, uh, in this case, 20 CV. I think. Sorry, I don't know that information quite yet. Uh, I believe that's 20 CV blade steel. It's hollow ground. And I do know just from uh, chatting back and forth with Kevin that they are going to make that a deeper hollow. It's already nice, but you know, you might want to, since it is hollow, you might want to take it uh, that, you know, just go, go for broke and go as thin and deep a hollow as possible, and I think that's what they're going to do with that, making this an even better cutter. I mean, this thing's a pretty tremendous cutter already, and I'm going to show that off in a minute, uh, but you make that hollow grind even thinner, it's going to be even thinner behind the edge. It's just going to cut all day and be very, very useful that way. 
So I said everything is crowned. All the surfaces are nicely crowned on the top and and uh, on the bolster here. But when you look inside the opening hole, it's it's um, it's a little more sharp. It's uh, just for purchase. You wouldn't want that inside surface to be crowned because your finger might slip out uh, when when opening the knife. Um, I think optimized for Spidey Flick with this shaped hole, which reminds me a little bit of a sports car, a little bit. Um, but yeah, you, I don't, I don't think that was the intended. Uh, I think it's just a hole that fits in that in that space really nicely. But to me, I saw a sports car. Maybe it's because it's it's getting nicer out, and I'm starting to see nicer cars out and about. Uh, so you got that, you got this 50-50 choil situation here, which is very nice for coming up on the blade for, for harder use or for whatever that close-in work is that people talk about. You know, um, hang on one second. Hey, baby doll. Yeah, I'm making a video. Thank you. Uh, my girl, she's always singing and it's beautiful, but uh, you know, no soundtrack for this particular video. What was I getting at here? Oh, uh, so the inside of this hole is not crowned, it's chamfered, and so it gives you a little bit of an edge to deploy that with. You can get the fat of your thumb in there or your forefinger and uh, and open it up. Slow roll it or what have you. And now the reason you can slow roll this easily is because it's a bolster lock. I love bolster locks. You get the the benefit of a, of a liner lock or a um, frame lock but also it, it's like it's like halfway between the liner lock and a frame lock because you get more of that robust interface here with all this meat behind the blade here but you get the benefit the deployment benefits that you see with a liner lock you don't have to worry about depressing the lock bar when you're opening it so in this case um, i think this would be a difficult knife to slow roll if this lock bar were exposed uh, but in this case, you can just kind of put your thumb in there and open it up nice and slow. You can flick it with your finger. You can even use your thumb. To me, that's less comfortable, um, but totally doable. Um, and I think he mentioned something about access to the lock bar. So there might be a bit of a void here, which would even make um, thumb deployment even more convenient and easy. But to me, I picked this up, I immediately went, you know, just went straight to the Spidey flick. And Man Alive, is it gratifying because it is such a smooth action. Now, uh, I realize this has uh, had time to break in through other people, but I have a feeling, this being QSP and also uh, knowing a little bit about Lefty's, uh, um, you know, what his druthers would be in designing, uh, I have a feeling this was ultra smooth you know, when it showed up, but just a really gratifying, um, action. And it feels nice to, you know, it's, it's drop shutty for sure, but it also feels nice just to, you know what? I like closing knives like that, you know, manually, not just letting gravity do all the work. You've got a titanium bolster and integral liner here, which is nice. Um, and then you have this slab of gorgeous linen. I mean, um, canvas micarta in there you've got the devo knives logo right on the pivot which i like a lot you don't see anything on the blade just a nice um neutral blade and i do like seeing their logo somewhere on the blade and that is the perfect spot i don't like logos on clips of course you wouldn't be able to put it on this wire clip anyway but i don't like logos on clips or handles but on the pivot i think it's i think it looks sweet uh, looks easy enough to take apart. I think you remove these scales and then the body screws are underneath the scales, kind of uh, old school custom style. And then you've got the wire clip that switches to both sides. So this knife is a, uh, oh, and a presumably titanium backspacer. This knife is such a nice blend of utility and utilitarian, like you might see with this pocket clip and through its intended purpose, uh, just, and you know, classy, beautiful, you know, like it, uh, this knife would satisfy, well, guys like me who really, really put a premium on how a knife looks and, and feels, but definitely how it looks. 
and then also people who carry a knife uh, to use hard every day on the job or what have you. This, this satisfies both of us, I would say. Um, I'm really impressed with this knife. How is it in reverse grip? Well, I don't ever imagine you using it in reverse grip, but it's comfortable because it's that it's got that neutral handle. You know, I don't see this as much of a reverse grip knife as a <laughs> knife with all of these kind of uses. Boom, boom. Even back here, boom, if you have to reach out. Uh, to me, this is the most comfortable grip on this knife. And uh, man alive, I like it. All right, let me show you just two quick size comparisons so you get an idea with two very common knives and sizes. This is like the Mini Grip or the Mini RSK Mark I at a 3-inch, 2.96-inch uh, blade. And then here you have the Paramilitary II. And if you look at it, very much the same when you go north of the handle or west of the handle uh, in terms of cutting edge and all of that. But, you know, Bob, which one would you take if you could only have one? I got to be honest, I'd take the stout. You know how I feel about this anyway. I like it, but uh, I have some issues with the PM2 and they're all frivolous, believe me. Um, so that's about the size. If you like the size of the PM2, but thought it always had a little too much handle, this is perfect size, perfect size. Um, all right, so I'm going to, um, oh, I showed this off, sort of leathery case, it's very nice, like that. I'm gonna do a little bit of cutting of stuff because uh, I've used this a couple of times and it's very impressive and I thought I'd show you. I'm gonna use this cutting board. Yeah, I know that's a cutting board, but I think I'm just gonna use this one. All right, uh, let's see, I have a couple of things to cut. Let's start with the with the easiest, some non-paracord. This is some cheap nylon um, stuff, but it's it's pretty good um, for, well, it's pretty good for cutting and then discarding. <laughs> but it's, it's pretty stout string. See what I did there with the language? Oh my gosh, no problem. I mean, should there be a problem? No, but here, let's do it like this. Let's see, all of it, because I'm just gonna try all of it. Let's see what it does. It will laugh at this string, I believe. Oh my gosh. Okay, like it's not even there. So like I said, again, this isn't full paracord. It's more like two, uh, 220 or 240 cord or whatever they call that, but it's also kind of cheap, but it cruised through that like it's nothing. All right, let's see, maybe there's something else. Um, all right, let's try this rope. This is a rope, it's not climbing climbing rope, but this is rope you get at Home Depot. This is what I replaced the swing set ropes with uh, on our swing set. No problem at all. Oh my gosh, oh really, look at this. I'm not even pulling, it's just a push cut. Wow, super sharp. And I do believe this may have been touched up along the way by other people who are looking at it, but it just goes to show the excellent uh, geometry. Look, it slices through this uh, like it's, I'm not gonna say butter, like it's um, licorice. Look at this, man. All right, let's see. Okay, not a problem there. All right, so let's move on to a stouter string. Stout, stouter string. Did you get that? I didn't mean that. I use stout the word a lot, but let's see. Okay, this is big, nasty, gnarly nylon. I will probably... Oh, man. Not a kind, not a kind material on a knife blade. And basically cruised through it. Let's see. Let's just see if I can, if I can manage this. Yep, very little problem getting through this stuff. Mm. Okay, now moving away to a less unpleasant material. I do not like this string at all, or this rope at all. When you cut it, it pops all this nasty, uh, this plastic crap all over the place. All right, so here 
we have a rag. Look at that. Like cutting a sausage. All right. Oh, well, here. Then we got. Oh, no. My two paint sticks are. Let's see. No problem with that. No problem with that. Problem with that. Nope. No problem. See how it does on wood. Get a nice slip under that wood with that thin edge. Look at those tiny little curls. This stir stick is probably not the best wood to be doing this with, but it's going under there like it's bar soap. All right, okay. Oh, one last thing, let's see. What do we do mostly with these things? We cut boxes. So let's, let's see what this cardboard, how this works. Across the grain, no problem. Let's see. In the seam, I mean, you know, absolutely glides through the material. Let's see. I rarely do this, so it's a little awkward under the camera. Hope I don't slice my finger off. All right, so this this is a sharp knife. <laughs> I do uh, I do say I dare say this thing is awesome. I'm gonna strop it. It doesn't need it though. Uh, not that I did much work with it, but you can tell. Oh God, yeah, still very very sharp. Well, I thank you, uh, Lefty, for loaning this to me and. <laughs> Man, I dig it, I dig it. It's got that lock bar insert, so it didn't get, a lot of times when you do hard work, you'll push that lock bar over and it'll get a little wedged in there. Not in this case, it did beautifully. I love these bolster locks. So I think this was a great I, great decision to go with a bolster lock for this sort of hard use EDC knife. I'm not sure if he's calling it a hard use EDC knife, but I am for my purposes. I'm not gonna go, because uh, I don't do stuff more than what I just did here. And you know, you don't see me cutting that yellow rope often, but this thing will do ya. I'm digging it. I look forward to speaking to Kevin about it. All right, well, everyone, thanks for watching. This is the Devo Knives Stout, and it's pretty damn awesome.